Thanks everyone for joining this session. This session today is about Azure Terraform uh, Landing Zone, a deep dive session. I'm joined today with a regular of this show. Hello, Laurent. Hi, Arno. How Thanks are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again on this, uh, on this session today. So really, today is about getting deeper down into the architecture of the Terraform landing zone that we have for Azure based on the Cloud Adoption Framework. And really, to do that, we're going to first review on first, why should you layer your landing zone configuration? Why should you do the layering of your uh, environment? Then we're going to do a deep dive on what we call the modules, the blueprints, the landing zone. Why doing that? What is their individual responsibilities and roles? And how do you combine that together to make a deployment inside the cloud? And then we're going to do a demo of crafting your very own uh, landing zone to achieve some real-world uh, deployment topology. So here we go, while layering your Terraform configuration. So just as a quick reminder, this session is a deep dive uh, to go deeper on what we talked in the previous webinar, which was the Azure Landing Zone uh, on Terraform introduction that we had a couple of weeks ago. So really remind that a landing zone is a set of blueprints that we put together to achieve a distributed applications infrastructure deployment. So this really creating a nice bed for the application when they come on your environment and they are comfortably installed on your environment with all the things you require in production, logging, tracking, tracing, best practices, and um, all of the fundamentals like that. If you want to get started with that, we invite you to go at uh, this session for, that we did a couple of weeks ago, and you can get started hands-on with aka.ms slash TF landing zone, which is the GitHub repository where you can find all of those landing zones. So remember, a uh, landing zone, a set of landing zones together compose a full service. So if you see this example of landing zones being together, you can see that in the green box that you see on the screen, you have the tranquility or the landing zone uh, layer uh, one, which set up actually all the fundamentals of tracing, logging, accounting and auditing in the subscription, the log analytics uh, best practices for the environment you put at work, as, you, as we talk about AD replication, active directory health, um, the key vault uh, state and key vault analytics, DNS analytics, all those fundamentals. So that's our first landing zone. Then we have on top of that another landing zone for virtual data center, what we call the layer two landing zone, which then brings additional services. And typically it's all about the different networks that you put together. So it's about having the shared network services with all your network security group. It's about having the egress using Azure Firewall. It's having your transit network using the VPN gateway, using the VPN connection, using the public IP addresses and deploying that automatically the VNet peering that you need. And sometimes it's a bidirectional VNet peering, sometimes it's a unidirectional VNet peering for the example of the egress uh, to core. So that's landing zones. Basically, when you deploy your environment, you compose that environment with multiple landing zones and you manage that with the layering. So why do you do this kind of layering? So first of all, Arnaud, what we need to explain to the audience here, so we learned so much about building software in the last decades, 20 years, so agile, test-driven development. I've been help, helping all the industry to build some very good quality of software. And by moving to infrastructure as code and automating all the different landing zones, so we need to follow exactly the same analogy of what we've learned in the past. So nobody, the risk we've got with infrastructure as code is to reproduce like a monolithic application. And you know monolithic application, nobody really wants to touch it because it's difficult to change. If you make a modification, maybe it can break also your application. So infrastructure as code is following exactly the same, uh, the same principle. And I'd like to say, Look at what we've been doing to decompose the complexity of a monolithic application using microservices uh, architecture. Blueprints or microservices are very much um, uh, the, uh, uh, following the similar approach. Earlier on the previous uh, webinar, we talked about, for example, the blueprint for policy. And the idea here is to make sure that the policy will focus on the policy, but will do it very well. Okay, so if you need to extend and add over time additional uh, policies, you will update the blueprint and then redeploy automatically in your virtual data center. The same applies for tran tranquility. So if you need to add additional shared component on tranquility, we do exactly uh, the same approach. But the idea is to simplify 
and being able to share also information between those different groupings ah, as microservices also share some information. Oh, and something as well that might be worth mentioning that allows very easily versioning. Versioning, absolutely, is another example. So versioning uh, will be also one of the principles that we are following on those blueprints. So understanding the version of the infrastructure, the version of the blueprint that you are using, it is a good way to be able to, to share a common understanding and to be able to bring the people from the operations back to the DevOps team will be able to understand, track, fix and improve uh, over time. So this idea of reusable module as well that we've got part of the, the blueprint is to be able to drive some consistency. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of analogy with what we've learned in software uh, development. So this layering is good. Can you give us an example of how we do that layering? Absolutely, and you see I was transitioning to, to those uh, virtual data center pillars. So what we've learned about working with large organizations is we need to decouple. Okay, We need to decouple uh, your uh, different blueprints and uh, your different uh, landing zones. At the very bottom, you've got what we call the level zero. The level zero is where you transition from manual to automation. You want to automate everything, and you want to make sure that you are going to drive a least privileged implementation. So to make sure that everything you do, reduce and just get the good enough level of permission to be able to achieve what you're supposed to do. So level zero in that instance is going to focus on subscription management and all the different elements that you need to build your virtual data center. On top of that, you are going to have the level one. So the level one is the security and the compliance. This is what you show, uh, shown uh, Arno with the tranquility blueprint. And this one focus on in, in enforcing that security controls are in place. You see, making sure that you got your preventive or reactive control. So you want to prevent bad things to happen, but if bad things happen, you want to make sure that you can react. What you see on that screen as well, you see level one and level zero can exchange some information. So there's a read access from level one to be able to access to, to the level zero. And you talk about that later, but I wanted to, to highlight a little bit that. The level two is going to focus more on the networking, the hub and spoke, the shared services. So this is where you, you are going to, to put all your DR, your backup, uh, uh, the patch management. This is where you put your DMZ, ingress, ingress that you, you show on the previous slides. On top of that, you've got the level three, and this is your application specific infrastructure landing zone. So as an example, if I deploy SAP on Azure, this is where I will get my SAP infrastructure, but if I use Kubernetes using AKS, and I want to also expose that publicly using a web application firewall, or I want an API gateway using API management, so all, all of that will be described into my um, applications uh, landing zone. But then, on top of that, this is why you got also the level four. So the level four focus on giving an environment that will be accessible to the developers. Don't forget what we said uh, on the previous session. It's very important to focus on the innovation and the modernization, the migration factory. So you want to empower the developer to be able to be as productive as possible. So if, for example, you got a team of developers using React, uh, Spring Boot uh, architecture, uh, and the containers, all of that, you want to make sure that they can build, and they can deploy as quick as possible on top of those level three applications infrastructure blueprints. So level four might not and will not be Terraform, would be like Ansible or this kind of stuff? Or? Yeah, it will be something more specific to your application. So if you use, for example, you build application using out system, sidecar on Azure, so that's this type of application. That's the content, that's the application itself. Okay, and you mentioned about a bunch of these infrastructure are actually uh, relying on Azure DevOps and Azure pipelines to uh, be deployed. So what does it mean? It means that I do continuous integration, continuous deployment? Absolutely, Arno. So, so, so the, the idea we've got here is to make sure that using infrastructure as code, you will be able to validate and build all of that is what we call an engineering environment or a sandpit environment. This is where you can craft, you can test, you can mature all the elaboration of those different landing zones, blueprints and modules. But then you can use the, the pipelines to be able to deploy to your dev environment, to your test environment, to your pre-production, up to your production environment. Even if you don't have yet an application in level 4, you want to be able to focus on building those 
different layers as quick as possible up to production. Because remember what I said at the beginning, if you got a monolithic application and you don't change it, you are scared to deploy. So you want to be able to practice the deployment as quick as possible up to production. So very pragmatically, when you are making your evolutions to your uh, blueprint, to your landing zone, would be like forking the code, creating your branch, creating an innovation, doing the innovation in this branch, versioning. And then you yeah, do an impact analysis. So you got a yeah, regression test that you are going to execute. So if, for example, you've got already a level one a tranquility that is being deployed on version 1.1 and you want to improve it, mm -hmm. so you are going to redeploy your 1.1 test the new feature to make sure that you can move from 1.1 to the new version and make sure it's not going to break. And when the feature has been validated, then you cut a new, re a new release, version 1.2, and then you redeploy. So from a security point of view, you are going to have also a reduction of privilege. So as you move up the stack of your virtual data center, you can see the red line show you a service principle reduction. So you want to make sure that on the level 4, level 3, they won't be able to access to lower levels. But that's the idea of a security uh, reduction. So that, the reason why we do that is to promote delegation and autonomy to projects, to business units. Because remember, I know they want to innovate. Customers want to innovate at pace, but we don't want to compromise also the governance and the security. So the core non-negotiable uh, things happen at the lower level and the innovation the fast code release probably happens a little bit more in the higher layers. Absolutely. So let's go a little bit more into the deep dive of the landing zone, the blueprints and the module. The anatomy of a landing zone, as we discussed earlier, so for example, virtual data center, um, uh, level one, level two, we talk about uh, yeah, mobile application development. There's different ways you, ca you can use the landing zone. They orchestrate a set of different blueprints. So the blueprints, uh, are the different building blocks, as we said earlier, and the landing zone is going to compose to create an application infrastructure that will be re re ready to use. The blueprints got a, an, a, so focus on image gallery, so a case cluster, a DMZ, so we've seen also, uh, it can be some ISV solution as well, Arnaud. So for example, I put an example with Checkpoint, F5, it can be SAP, so, so we got different ISV solution running on Azure, we can also be deployed on top of those um, environments. So a blueprint is a technical solution? It's more a technical building blocks that you are going to use to build your uh, virtual data center. Mm -hmm. And it's a solution of Sources. If I go to the next and focus on the modules, we see the modules focus on the, an even a lower level, like a virtual network, the resource groups, a virtual machine. The idea of the module is to drive consistency. They can be reused across different blueprints, but they are going to drive consistency on naming convention, on diagnostic, on alerting, on monitoring. So, as we see uh, in Terraform, we're having uh, the state, which is basically the sharing of information that you can have between different type of uh, resources. So here, what we do in terms of a landing zone, we have a landing zone is taking actually the input variables. Those input variables are gonna feed uh, basically the different blueprints that we are calling from the, from the landing zone. And this is this landing zone that will export really uh, a state. So when we are going to make multiple landing zones together, we're going to see that in a minute, then we're going to read actually the state from the landing zone and not from the blueprint. And each landing zone exports a set of uh, output variable as well. So when we're looking at uh, what could be the patterns and the approaches that we could have had with the Terraform uh, storage uh, construct, you could take an example of a very simple in infrastructure where you basically use Azure Blob Storage to store the different Terraform state of the different landing zone that you have in your environment. And this is fast, easy to manage, easy to deploy. That's the first approach. The second approach is a little bit more granular. It's gonna be uh, using some segregation. You're gonna put some uh, storage account for a set of the Terraform state, and you're gonna put another storage account for another set, that, another set of states for the Terraform uh, environment. 
So for that, you have different storage accounts. You, you really want to segregate the access uh, to the data and the access to the information. Some information can be sensitive security information, credentials that might be in the state. So you really want to have a separation of the repositories for that. So the different levels that we've seen earlier are now can be, for example, different storage accounts. So is there a one-size-fits-all uh, approach? Is there a best solution for everything? It, it's really based on the approach that you want to have for your, for your environment. So if we talk about this shared approach for our environment, well, it's, it's very easy to deploy an environment. You don't have to manage the role-based access control. You don't have to uh, manage too much complexity. Uh, it's simple to audit the utilization of the states. That's a good point when you have all central repository for that. Uh, on the cons, well, it's, it's really that, as you mentioned, some sensitive security information might be mixed and might be some different RBAC model that you should apply. And actually, if you put everything in the same uh, repository, that might be more difficult. So there's a mitigation around that. You can play uh, around the Azure AD authentication, uh, use that uh, AD authentication RBAC on the storage account. So that's something that now you can do on the storage account like and, and being more precise <laughs> than just the key as we used to have. Now we use Azure AD authentication. So if your Terraform execution is basically impersonated by an Azure identity, then you can use that and manage an RBAC, but still having the same repository for your Terraform state. Another approach, which is more extreme, is really to have uh, those separate accounts. So it's really easy to manage the same type of blueprint into the same storage account. So the policy controls, networking, landing zone, factory, all of those things that have things in common or same level of security, then you're going to put them into the same storage account. It's, it's easy to enable and decompose the virtual data center into security level. And Overall, it's obviously more secure and more uh, fit for regulated environment when you need and you must have this strong separation. So FSI, healthcare, uh, that's the typical type of deployment. The cons, as we mentioned, it's a little bit uh, additional complexity and testing. Um, but again, you would use this approach probably if you have this uh, mandatory regulation uh, and, and I think the key message that we need to share with the audience here, focus on what is good enough. Okay? So you don't have to bring that complexity at the beginning. So when you start building your Azure um, uh, Terraform landing zone, blueprints and modules, focus on what is good enough. And complexity can be added over time. So let's do a little bit of a demo of that, uh, Laurent. Yeah, so let, let me go through an, an illustration of what we just uh, described. So as you can see on the screen, so I've got this uh, landing zone uh, of the virtual data center, the level two. And uh, if you look at the code snippet, you can see that we use a data block. So the data block is able to retrieve some information. And in that instance, that's a Terraform uh, remote state. And the level two of the virtual data center is connecting to the key that you can see Terraform level one. So the Terraform level one is a state. And the landing zone level two get only a read-only access to the level one. and can capture in the local variable all the different useful information that we want to be able to consume. So here, what really, really is a code convention. So we mentioned that the key for landing zone level one is this name. Yeah, we use convention in our, in, in our uh, yeah, pattern and practices of this um, the Terraform landing zone to make sure that the name of the blueprint will be also the key that will be the name of the Terraform state in the storage account. Because that's we want to drive more, read it has to be readable. So when you look at the code, you should be able to understand what we are trying to achieve. What you see on the left, so I mentioned as well that we can put some level of security. So that we guarantee that level, landing zone level two can only read, get access to the information. I can also secure. So I know you mentioned that earlier when we separate across different storage accounts. So that's one of the benefits we've got to build a very secure foundation uh, on, with Terraform on Azure. If I go to the next slide, what you can see, the, the, the level two of the virtual data center will use those input variables to be able to inject those parameters for an additional blueprint. So this blueprint is called the shared services that we've seen earlier on the architecture diagram. And what I'm highlighting here on the yellow light are all the variables coming from the local uh, Terraform, uh, the, the remote Terraform state that I store in a local variable. So all the local comes from the level down and the variable that we see here in the code is something new, new parameters that you're injecting. 
Absolutely. That can be, for example, specific to a de development environment, from a testing environment, or from a production environment. This is another way where we can consume and mix and match uh, a little bit uh, those different elements. So this is uh, also the virtual data center level two, and you can see we use the shared egress uh, blueprint. And in that example, we combine everything. So we combine what's coming from the remote data state using the local variable. But we can see at the bottom as well, we inject, we take variable coming as an output variable for um, another blueprint. So that's another blueprint within the same landing zone? Within the same landing zone, absolutely. And that's, if you remember, we had the shared services, we, uh, we, uh, we had the shared services, we had the egress, and you were mentioning we need to connect that together using uh, a VNet peering. That's exactly what we are doing here. So in that Terraform, what is going to create is graph uh, of resource consumption. It's going to see which module, well, which blueprint is dependent on the other. Absolutely. It's going to create this graph to deploy the environment in the fastest way possible. Absolutely. But this is how I can decompose. You see, those blueprints are very independent. And at the landing zone level, I will be able to assemble. Very similar like the Lego blocks that I put together. Different shape help me to achieve a different construction. So here, my blueprints are my, my building blocks in my virtual data center to be able to achieve a solution. In that case, that, that's my virtual data center level two. Very good. So I think we can agree that it was a rather simple demo based on PowerPoint. Yeah, so now let's do it. Let's do a little bit more complicated demo. So crafting your own landing zone. So basically, what is it all about? If you see on the next slide, you see that very basically start from the graphics, right? Start from the architecture diagram, diagram, whether it's on a whiteboard, whether it's on a nice Visio diagram. Let's get visuals of what you're trying to achieve. Then decompose to what you have available in your toolbox. So you have your set of blueprints, you have your set of modules. Are those elements enough to what you need to achieve? So what elements can you put together inside a blueprint that maybe you suspect you might reuse later. And what are the elements that are very standalone and specific to this landing zone, in which case it's probably not a module, not a blueprint, but a resource that you deploy directly for the specific purpose of it. Absolutely. And once you have that, well, start working or start coding. So let's try to achieve something uh, uh, together. Let's get our hands dirty. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so in this demo, we are going to deploy an AKS Dual Region Cluster building on uh, the Landing Zone VDC Level 1, which is the one who sets all the foundation for the auditing, accounting, and foundations of operation. So I'm inside uh, this Landing Zone, and I'm calling actually a module which is private and which is a blueprint for AKS with Application Gateway. So you're going to see that I'm going to do that only for one region. I'm getting the prefix for the local uh, variable. I'm going to set a set of variables that are going to identify the configuration for my environment. And I'm going to have all the things that I have from the level one, which are the foundations of diagnostics and accounting, which I'm just going to uh, plug it uh, here. So if you look at the variables, we see that I have deployed a complex object, which is the AKS resource group for region one here where I specify uh, networking, the name of the resource group and the region where I'm going to deploy it. So you see it's all in uh, Southeast Asia. And I have a region two section, which is uh, exactly the same, except it's inside um, East Asia. So that's the way I'm going to call this variable. I'm creating this object. Same thing for the virtual network. I'm going to create an AKS network object where I deploy my configuration, my IP address space inside Southeast Asia with a special subnet for the application gateway AKS cluster. And then I have a set of regular uh, subnet uh, cluster, which I put for my uh, environment. See, I have the same topology for the region uh, two. So I have my object with the VNets, which are very uh, similar, uh, deploying in my uh, environment. And then for the identity, same thing, I created a dual region vision for the identity and the account to be created. And that's uh, now more the services that are related to my ACLS cluster um, by itself. And you can see that same thing. This is very similar object. They're just living in two uh, different Azure region. 
on the filtering side, I'm applying uh, my uh, web application gateway, my web application filtering, and I'm going to deploy uh, the same thing, the parameter, which are WAF enable on the front end port and the back end port that you see here. Region 2 is the same, and you can see that then I'm actually giving to the environment the settings about diagnostics. So each type of diagnostics, I can have the granularity on how long I keeping, I'm keeping the log for the component. So if you look at a little bit of the detail, you see that actually this landing zone is calling, uh, is calling a blueprint. And in this blueprint, we have the CAF blueprint AKS with application gateway. So you can see that in this one, I'm using a set of modules. Some of them like the network coming from the registry, uh, the Terraform registry. Some of them coming from uh, GitHub. And some of them are just simple uh, local module, which I have on my local file system. And you see here that I'm composing uh, the call to my AKS cluster by having a different set of variable coming from first variables that I entered and also some that come from other modules that I called previously. So I'm getting the object from the virtual network, for instance, that I created separately. And inside this environment, you see also I have the module. So the module is more granular uh, type of deployment. So uh, AKS module is dedicated to deploy an AKS configuration. So here you see really the AKS configuration, like the agent pool profile, the service principle that we're going to use, uh, client ID and client secret, and I get that as a variable. I'm calling the diagnostics as the diagnostics module from the Terraform registry, as you see it. And I specify a configuration for a log analytics solution to be monitoring the container. So that's something I add on my log analytics configuration, actually. I now have the rest of my configuration. I have my Nginx ingress controller. I have the, all the elements that are composing my uh, AKS deployment. And the configuration of the application gateway is called here, as you see, in a separate module. And this module has the only responsibility, yes, to uh, deploy the configuration of the edge filtering, the layer 7 inspection of my AKS cluster. So you see here, I'm specifying the variables from my configuration, and I'm going to call uh, that from my other elements of my deployment. So without any further wait time, let's just try to do first thing. We can do the plan, but we can do the apply as well in order to uh, fast track a little bit this uh, settings application. So it's going to check at the configuration and it's going to check with whatever I have deployed uh, already in my environment. It's going to review the data sources for the previously existing configuration based on uh, the Terraform state environment I give them. And you're seeing here that I'm not using my identity. We're using a service principle to execute the environment. So you see that it's going to help me when I'm going to transition that uh, to a CI CD environment and not just inside uh, my workstation and my account. So that's why you see this identity, uh, this point of execution. Now Terraform is downloading the different modules. You see that there are some modules that we're getting from the Terraform registry and from GitHub. So that's when it's going to create this local cache of all uh, the logic that we have for our environment and then slowly apply the configuration. So it's a rather complex environment. So after a little while, we see that we can get all the detail of the objects that are going to be created in my environment. You see the plus uh, sign that you have, the green plus sign means all sort of new components that we're going to deploy. So remember, we're deploying a virtual network. We have this presence of the log analytics, the storage account, the web application firewall. They are all, uh, all here. And as we speak, it has started the deployment. So you can guess it's taking a little while to deploy all of those components. Some of them are quite uh, taking some time. You can see the Kubernetes uh, cluster is now uh, starting, as well as some other virtual networks are going to be start. I can have a quick uh, glance at the configuration. I can see that uh, the storage account and the resource group already has started to be created. The uh, cluster uh, networking 
uh, the networking for cluster one are started as well. And you have a quick view on the tagging structure that we have and the different subnets are being deployed as well with a security group for the cluster, but not for the application gateway. You see that automatically we are benefiting here from the level one configuration. So all the security and accounting environment, we get it from level one and it's automatically stitched to uh, this configuration of my AKS cluster without me having to do anything. If we go back to our Terraform environment, you see that the creation of the resources is still going on. We're having the cluster ready, the Nginx controller is here, the application gateway is here as well. So we can have a look at application gateway, we see it's having its backend uh, uh, pool. So the configuration is effective. I can do a very quick test, uh, testing my environment, doing the curl of the IP directly, which I don't have an uh, answer, I have a 404. If I get a quick check on the pro, so I'm using on uh, health, then you see that now it's uh, working, so I really have something behind it. So my environment is running in my region one now. So if you remember, we wanted to actually create an environment running into region. So how to do that? Well, let's be lazy and let's just take this module, copy, paste, and replace one with two. That's a very important aspect of code, infrastructure as code, and things that you can do very easily with Terraform. You've already done all of your logic, done all of your configuration of your environment. You see that it's working for one, so you can try making it for two, and then making it work for many. So you see that I'm reusing all the objects I've created previously. I'm not applying the configuration on region two, which I already had uh, the object created previously, as you remember, for the AKS cluster, the network, the WAF, etc., etc. So right now I can just apply my configuration. Of course, it's going to take a bit of time as well, but you see that's a very good example of the reutilization and most importantly, of the consistency of the deployment you could have across uh, different deployments and different regions very important for your infrastructure. So that's a very quick uh, example of how you can deploy that environment, how you build on a previously existing landing zone and deploy a whole new class of uh, services with Terraform on Azure uh, by utilizing our landing zones. All right, so we see in this demo, the tool set, the concept that you use for coding, Visual Studio Code, Azure DevOps, all those things put in action in order to deliver uh, innovation, multiple teams across the organization, and innovate fast, improve fast, to make acceleration of delivering the value. It's, it's all about that ultimately, right? Absolutely, uh, and the purpose of crafting your own landing zone, blueprint, or even building some uh, reusable uh, modules is not to be perfect at the beginning. The purpose for you is to be able to learn. So to learn how can you refactor, how the platform is working, how do you connect different co components together. That's why you will be able to gain more maturity, much more understanding how the, the Azure platform is working, and help you to focus on the higher part of uh, the virtual data center, on the level three, level four, because this is where you are going to support the business to be able to innovate. And don't forget, we are doing that to help to support the business to do digital transformation and make sure they can focus on what matters for your end customers. So on that, we have all set of resources available, as you mentioned, on aka.ms slash tf dash landing zones, all the initial modules that we give you to play, modules, blueprint and landing zones. Set of examples are there for you to implement. Best recommendation we can give you is start hacking, start playing, assemble the module, disassemble them, trying to make it work in a different way for your specific purpose. Maybe something that we implemented you don't like, you prefer to do it slightly in an other way for your environment. That's okay. That's, okay. That's totally fine. And if you want to contribute back to the community, is more than happy to, to hear your stories and ideas on how to improve the model for the greater community. So all of that on the GitHub. Remember, it's all about talking about the cloud adoption framework. So it's all about aligned to this uh, Microsoft cloud adoption framework for Azure. It's all about the virtual data center initiative, which sees a little bit more uh, environment with a different implementation uh, they're using in the virtual data center. They also have a repository using 
Python, using other uh, types of code. So it's always interesting to have inspiration from other ways to do stuff. And if you want to get started with the fundamentals of uh, Terraform on Azure, uh, very good friends from the Azure Citadel, uh, which have a set of hands-on, step-by-step guidance on how to get started on, uh, on Azure and on Terraform with it. And we got your blog, obviously, Arnaud. Uh, so, thanks yeah. again for this uh, ad, uh, <laughs> Laurent. <laughs> and a little bit of a YouTube, YouTube playlist where we have put a set of those videos to get started with uh, those blueprints, modules, and landing zone. So again, uh, still a couple of minutes for you to ask our questions in the chat box uh, below, don't hesitate. More than happy to hear your questions and feedback. Thanks again for joining this session today and see you very soon on the Azure Infrastructure Webinar Series. Thank you very Thank much. You very much.